Hey friends, welcome back to another episode. In this week's episode, I'm going to be tackling a giant dining table project for a lovely client of mine with a giant crack in the base and a lot of wear and tear on this top. I am certainly in for quite the adventure with this piece. So join me as I share with you how I transformed this piece and shocked the client. My name is Katerina and I live in a small town in beautiful northern Alberta. I restore and refinish furniture both for myself and for clients. Welcome to my shop. There was still quite a fair bit of finish left on this piece even though it doesn't look like there is there really was quite a thick finish left on it still so I chose to use the circa 1850 soft strip just because I'm really amped about using it and having access to it. But hindsight is 2020, and looking back, I should have used circa 1850 chemical stripper. I spent a lot of time scraping this top coat off of this table, and I did have to reapply and do a second coat of stripper and scraping in order to get the remaining finish off so I could have it ready for sanding. But as with all things in life, sometimes you don't learn these lessons until the task is done and you look back and think, well, I could have done that differently. So this is one of those scenarios for me for sure. neutralizing the stripper with water I did set the table aside for about 24 hours so it could fully dry before I started sanding it. Normally I like to take everything apart with my tables so that way I am really making sure I get everything. So the gliders in this scenario are in very good shape. The skirting that's on the underside of the table was secured with glue and screws and both of the glue and screws were in very good shape. So I try to live by my mantra, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. So this isn't broken, so I'm not fixing it. So I'm going to leave the skirting on here and I'm going to use my surf prep sander. It's a three by four sander and it is perfect where you are working on curves and flat surfaces at the same time in a small amount of space. For anyone who is doing this full time or beyond just a hobby, I highly recommend looking into purchasing yourself a surf prep sander as they will absolutely change how you sand your pieces and how long you sand your pieces for. Purchasing a surf prep was a huge investment in my business and in myself. And even though I'm not sponsored by surf prep, I still would recommend this to anyone who loves refinishing furniture and restoring furniture, either full time or as a hobby. This tabletop is over 30 years old. It has been through a lot. 
there were several heat marks and water marks from hot plates and cups and mugs being placed on the table, slowly over time degrading the manufacturing top coat. With this being a solid oak piece, and knowing that I can be slightly more aggressive with oak, I decided to use a 60 grit to start on this piece. Now, normally, I do not recommend using a 60 grit on anything, as its sole purpose is to take wood away. But in this project, 60 grit was the perfect place to start, as it really prepared my piece for the next step. So I started at 60 grit, and then I went to 80, and then I went to 120, and then I finished by hand sanding with a 150 grit, and then a 180 grit sandpaper. I just wanted to mention as well that I did do the same stripping and sanding process with the base of this table. I just didn't end up recording most of it because it's all the same thing at the end of the day, and sometimes that can get really boring to watch. So I did the exact same process and I just prepped the piece for staining. Despite its age, there were not too many issues that needed to be dealt with on this tabletop. There was, however, one small crack on the end of the piece here where one of the screws is to hold down the anchor bracket here. So to fix this, it's really quite easy. It was just a simple glue up. I removed the anchor bracket first and then separated the wood and used my syringe with glue inside it to get into that space and then taped it shut and clamped it. There are a few of us in northern Alberta who refinish furniture. I'm the only one in northern Alberta currently who exclusively refinishes and restores dining tables and chairs. And I take pride in this, but it's also a heck of a lot of work. Dining tables are very heavy. They come with a lot of difficulty and the chairs themselves can be another task in itself. 
so much so that I am not even going to be discussing the chairs in this video. I'm leaving that for an entirely separate video. They had a whole bag of issues that I needed to deal with. So for this episode, it's just discussing the transformation of this table. This next repair was innocently caused by the client. She stood on top of the table to clean the light that was above it. And as she went to step off, she stepped on the edge of the table and it leaned over, cracking the base of the table. So for this repair, I am using an epoxy from JB Weld. I chose to use the epoxy rather than wood glue because of its strength. So initially I used a gluing syringe to try to force the epoxy down into the gap. Uh, that didn't work. The epoxy is too thick. And so I removed the syringe and just kept the product inside the syringe vial and then pushed that using gravity as my friend to help it move down into the crack. I then used a thin piece of cardboard to shove the epoxy down as far as I could into the opening of the crack and then proceeded to seal and clamp everything nice and tight and left this for 24 hours. Once the epoxy was fully cured, I sanded the base back and prepped everything for stain. The client is currently undergoing a modernization of sorts in her house. And so the table is the first project that is going to be completed. So picking a color was actually a really difficult thing to do. Eventually we landed on this stunning espresso. It is a water-based stain from Minwax. I know a lot of people don't like using water-based stains and I know a lot of refinishers especially don't like using Minwax. I like using Minwax. I find I get really great results with Minwax and so essentially become my go-to stain of choice. The key thing when you're using a water-based stain is to let the product sit on the wood to absorb. If you wipe it on and then wipe it off right away, it's not giving the product enough time to fully absorb into the grain of the wood. So don't be afraid to use the product. Here I put quite a bit on and then let it sit. And it's okay if it sits for five, six minutes. What I'm looking for at the end before I wipe it off is how much stain is left over. If I've got a, a ton of stain left over when I'm drying it and wiping it away, then I know I have not let it sit on this piece long enough or I have closed the grain of the wood too much by over sanding. If I've done that, then I need to go back and fix my sanding so that way I can reopen the grain of the wood to allow it to absorb the stain. So double check what you're using, double check what you're doing, and always make sure that you're reading the instructions on the products so that way you're using them correctly.
for the final stage of this project, I am going to top coat with my Verithane water-based non-yellowing polyurethane in satin. The tabletops that I do get a minimum of six coats and I do this for extra longevity and durability and the bases typically get four coats. This product is fantastic, it's user friendly, it's a product that goes on milky and then dries clear and you can actually reapply this after about 30 minutes but I'm choosing to wait a couple of hours in between and I will reapply several coats after this. In between coats I will scuff sand with a 600 grit just to smooth out any of the little nits and hairs that may land on the surface as it's drying and by doing that it will make it perfectly smooth and ready for the next coat to be accepted. While you watch me top coat the table, as always I wanted to say a huge thank you to everyone for watching my videos, commenting, liking and subscribing. It means the world to me and it allows me to keep doing what I love to do and share it with you all. So thank you so much. I do my best to post new projects every other weekend to share what is happening in my shop. I'm thrilled to announce that you can now join my channel as a member. This is a fantastic way to support what I do here and get some exclusive perks in return. As a member, you'll get access to exclusive content, one-on-one -on -one project discussion, and supporter shoutouts in my videos. If you're interested, just click the join button below this video. I can't wait to share this journey with you guys. I get asked quite often from people who want to refinish their own pieces of furniture. When is the best time to do your touch-ups? And the best time is after you've stained and done one top coat. And the reason for this is because all top coats will change the color of your stain. And so if you apply a wax in the stain color prior to top coating and it then gets darker, you run the risk of having a repair that is now too light for the piece and it will stand out. So my best advice to anyone who loves to refinish or is refinishing, always wait to do your last edits of a piece until after you've applied the first layer of top coat. This guarantees that you can get the best possible color match between your waxes and your stain. I hope that helps. That wraps it up for this project. I hope you enjoyed it. I certainly loved working on it. It is an absolutely beautiful table in the end and the client is so happy with it. She thought this was a throwaway until she met me and we had a chat and now look, it's absolutely stunning and we'll survive another generation of family and friends enjoying beautiful meals and sharing memories together. Thank you all for watching today's episode. I will see you again in two weeks. Until then, feel free to enjoy some of my other videos and please have yourselves a wonderful day. Bye for now.